Now we'll do simple complex and compound sentences in details. Now before proceeding into the chapter, we have to understand what a sentence is. We have done sentence and kinds of sentences previously. A sentence is a group of words which convey a complete meaning, which have a complete meaning. And each sentence is divided into the subject and the predicate. Now, why is subject predicate, why am I introducing it here? Because you will need it to understand the clause. Now, next step will be to understand the difference between a phrase and a clause. Now, the phrase and the clause. Phrase, what is a phrase? Phrase are, phrases are a group of words. They are a group of words that do not make complete meaning by itself. But when they are put inside a, in, in a sentence, they do make complete sense. It's a part of a sentence. Now, this particular part of a sentence, that is the phrase, it does not have a subject, nor does it have a predicate or a verb. Now, to understand, I have supplied um, an example. Look at the example carefully. The sun rises in the east. This is a very simple sentence. The sun rises in the east. So here it is underlined, see, in the east. That part is the phrase. Now, if I say in the east, will it separately, if I don't put it in that sentence and I keep it separately and just say in the east, does it make any sense at all? No, it does not make any sense at all. Now, this particular, these three words, which is the phrase, does not have a subject, does not have a predicate, nor does it have a verb. On the other hand, you see a clause. Clause again, they, are, they too are a group of words. But this particular group of words have a subject, has a, uh, they have a predicate and a finite, a finite verb. Now again, we have the example here. People who pay their debts are trusted. People who pay their debts are trusted. See, the unlined words are who pay their debts. So that part is the clause. That is to the like a phrase, it is also a part of a sentence. Here, who pay their debts is a clause. Now, uh, as I told you before, this uh, a clause has a subject, a predicate and a finite verb. So here the subject is who and the predicate is pay their debts. And the finite verb here is pay. Okay. That is the finite verb. Now, we have understood what a phrase and a clause is. Now, moving forward, we will start uh, with the first part, first uh, Case, it is simple sentence. What is a simple sentence? What must a simple sentence have? A simple sentence has one subject, one predicate, and only one finite verb. I was saying it has one subject, one predicate, and only one finite verb. And there are two main parts of which a simple sentence can be composed. It has to have a subject and a predicate. The example here is the sun shines. A very simple sentence. The sun shines. So here the subject here is the thing or person we talk about. So we are, we are talking about the sun. And what do, we, uh, uh, what do we know about the sun in this sentence? It shines. So the sun becomes a subject while shines this is the only word which it, which comprises the uh, which is the predicate so when the predicate consists of one word that word is always a verb because we cannot see anything without a verb so in this case you see the sun shines the sun is a subject 
sun being the noun and shines is the verb so since we have only one uh, uh, predicate here that particular word will have to be a verb because we cannot construct sentences without a verb moving forward to compound sentence now what is a compound sentence a compound sentence has two or more independent clauses now you will understand why i mentioned phrase and clause clauses so you see a compound sentence has two or more independent clauses what do you mean by independent clauses these clauses if they are separated and placed individually they will make complete sense they are not dependent on the other clause for the for its meaning so it has complete meaning by itself so it is not dependent on any other clause so that's why it is an independent clause each makes complete sense by itself and these clauses are joined by coordinating conjunctions each of them them here as the uh, means each of the clauses they have the same rank not no uh, uh, that means they are of equal rank therefore they are called principal or main clause now compound sentences can be of two types double where you have two independent clauses and multiple where you have more than two independent clauses double example here is the moon was bright and we could see our way the moon was bright this is one clause another clause is we could see our way that is another clause so both these clauses are joined by and and here is the coordinating conjunction which joins two clauses of equal rank now multiple uh, compound sentence here night came on and rain fell heavily and we all got very wet so here we see the first clause here is night came on makes complete sense rain fell heavily that too makes complete sense we all got very wet so if they are separated and placed individually they make complete sense so they are independent clauses they do not depend on any other clause for its meaning so we have three independent clauses that is more than two therefore it is called a multiple the multiple compound sentence night came on and rain fell heavily and we all got very well now all these clauses are joined by and which is the coordinating conjunction now the coordinating conjunction we know the types the first type is cumulative example here he was not only accused but also convicted in this case not only but also what is their function the coordinating parts are simply linked or coupled together they couple together okay now alternative that is she must weep or she will die neither a borrower nor a lender here in this particular case we see a choice is being offered between one statement and the other next elective which shows inference or we draw a conclusion as i had done earlier but i said inference means to draw a conclusion he came back tired for he had walked all day so he was tired why the reason being he had walked all day so he is lazy therefore he is fail he will sorry he will fail here in each sentence one statement or fact here uh, he uh, he was he is lazy that's a fact isn't it one statement of fact is inferred or proved from another like he came back he sorry he came back tired now how do why there's a reason so this is proved by the fact that why he had walked all day so he had walked all day since he had walked all day he came back tired so one statement proves the other 
Now, coordinating clauses can also be joined together by a relative pronoun or adverb. Example, he slew all the prisoners, which was a very barbarous act. Here, which is a relative clause. Okay, a relative uh, joiner here. They join. They are the, this is the relative uh, pron uh, pronoun. Which, and he went to Delhi, where he stayed for 10 days. This is a relative adverb. Now, complex sentence. What is a complex sentence? Till now, we have done compound and its types, uh, double, multiple. And now we move forward to the other type, which is the complex sentence. Now, in a complex sentence, what happens? Uh, it has one main clause, but it has one or more subordinate clauses too. Till now, in compound sentence, we are only added two independent clauses or two or more independent clauses. Now, we are, uh, in the complex sentence, a subordinate clause or clauses are being introduced. See here, uh, in this case, we have one main clause or one or more subordinate clauses. What do you mean by subordinate? Why are they called subordinate clauses? Naturally, you have to uh, conclude that these clauses, they are not complete in meaning. They have to depend on the main clause for their full meaning. So, they are dependent. Therefore, they are subordinate to the main clause. Now, the clause which contains the main verb of the entire complex sentence is called the principal or main clause. The main clause contains the main verb. Now, there are three kinds of subordinate clauses. The first is the noun clause. The second is the adjective clause. And the third is the, is the adverb clause. Now, noun clause is one which does the work of a noun in relation that means it does the it has the function it uh, performs the function of a noun so uh, in on, in which the that it does the work of a noun in relation to some word in some other clause it performs like a noun so it's called a noun clause similarly adjective clause is has the function of an adjective performs the function of an adjective in uh, is one which does the work of an adjective in relation to some other word in some other clause. And what is an adverb clause? It is one which does the work of an adverb in relation to some other word in some other clause. So according to their function, they have been classified. If you if it performs the function of an adjective, it becomes an adjective clause. If it performs the function of an adverb, it becomes an adverb clause. And if it performs the function of a noun, it becomes a noun clause. Now, I have given you certain solved examples in order to uh, show you how to scan, how to pick out, how to identify which is the main clause and which is the subordinate clause. And therefore, ha how we are supposed to judge whether it's a compound sentence or complex sentence or simple sentence. Now, the first case here we see the horse red and the rider was thrown. Now, the horse red, just this, the rider was thrown. These two clauses, if they are separated, they too make complete sense by itself. So the first part, the horse red, is becomes a main clause. The rider was thrown, that too becomes a main clause. And the uh, conjunction and becomes a coordinating conjunction. So we can understand that this has to be a compound sentence. So it's written, therefore, compound sentence. Now, second, walk gently, else... You will not overtake him. Now look at the first part. Walk gently. Complete sense. Makes complete sense. You will not overtake him. This too makes complete sense. So again, the first part is a main clause. The second part too is a main clause. And it is again joined by the coordinating conjunction S. So this too becomes a compound sentence. The third part, the third sentence is, The town in which I live, is very large. Here, the town is very large has been bracketed off and I have underlined that in which I live. But that particular in which I live is a subordinate clause. If I place it separately and say in which I live, does it make any sense? But if I write the town is very large, it makes complete sense. So that is the main clause 
and in which I live is the subordinate clause. In here, the town is very large. Is becomes the main verb here as it's as it is. It was mentioned before that in the complex sentence, the main clause contains the main verb. So therefore, we understand since it has a subordinate clause, we can well understand that this is a complex sentence. The subordinate clause is an adjective clause in which I live. Okay, the town in which I live. It uh, performs the function of an adjective. Next. Fourth, I called him, comma, but he gave me no answer. I called him. He gave me no answer. They make complete sense by themselves. Now, if, uh, now, but, I have used but, which is a coordinating conjunction here. Which means that this sentence has to be a compound sentence. Number five, I agree to your proposals, comma, for I th think him reasonable. Again, the same thing here. I agree to your proposals. I think them reasonable. These two make complete sense by themselves, which is joined by for, which is a coordinating conjunction. So therefore, this becomes a Compound sentence. Sentence 6. Canada is a rich country. Here, there's only one clause here. Okay. Which has a subject, Canada, and a predicate is a rich country. And one verb is. So, this is a simple sentence containing one subject, one predicate, and one single verb. Now, sentence 7. I went... Because I was invited. I went. It's completely okay. Makes complete sense. But if I just write because I was invited. Doesn't make any sense at all. Now, if I join it to I went. It makes complete sense. So, because I was invited depends on the main clause. Therefore, it becomes the dependent or subordinate clause. In this case, it shows reason. Therefore, it's an adverb clause. So, since it contains a subordinate clause, it has to be a complex sentence. So, in this particular way, you have to scan each sentence and identify whether it is simple or compound or complex. We will do transformation uh, uh, in the next class where we will transform some uh, simple to complex, complex to compound. So, before doing that, you have to know what a simple sentence is, how it looks, what a compound sentence is, and what a complex sentence is. What is its, what is its nature? What is it supposed to have? So, that is why I have given a detailed, details I have given you, I have scanned these sentences so that you can understand how we are supposed to identify. Identification is the primary uh, step. You have to identify, then only you can transform. I have given you a few, uh, a few questions. State whether the following sentences are simple, compound or complex. Scan them accordingly. 1. We met rather few people who spoke English. Sentence 2. I have been on rather too many planes and trains recently sentence 3 we drove right up to the right up to helsinki in 2 days helsinki is the name of a place 4 i don't care how expensive it is sentence 5 2 minutes ago the child was fast asleep but now he is wide awake sentence 6 he is tall enough to be a soldier. Sentence 7. I guess she just doesn't respect you. Sentence 8. I have got four sisters and each of them is quite different from the others. Sentence 9. You will either come with me or walk home. Sentence 10. He will never leave home because he hasn't got the courage to. You have to do these, solve these examples and see 
whether you, uh, whether you are being able to identify how uh, what kind of sentences these are try to follow the examples i have given you and do practice because after this we do transformation